Op no longer wants her friends to babysit. AITA December 10, 22. Originally posted by you, Hadina Bottle in R, Am I the Asshole on December 10, 22. Updated in an edit. Difficult content warning warning. Did you know newborn kittens can hiss? This is rare to see. Though. So a lot of people think they're having breathing problems when they hear it. It's just their instincts kicking in to warn off trouble when they hear or smell something different. These hisses are, of course, properly intimidating. Read. Extremely adorable. Trigger warning. Dot exclamation mark. Questions of child abuse and sexual abuse. Less than original post. AITA for looking into professional babysitter for my child? I have a daughter who is roughly one year old. Her name is Allison. Her dad and I both work full-time jobs. Where I work between 3,540 hours a week and he works anywhere between 4,045 hours. We both work mornings. My friends Tom, 23 meters, and Skylar, 24F, had volunteered to watch Allison for us as Tom worked from home and Allison isn't known to cry very often. At first it was going great. Tom would have Allison in a separate and baby-proofed room where she could play with her toys while he worked. Then Skylar would take over when she came home. We offered pay many times but they kept refusing. And Skylar would ask us to bring Allison over if it had been a while since we asked her to help with babysitting. Finally we agreed to them having Allison three days a week but the maid has promised to stop offering to pay them. It was great for a while. It really worked out. But then Allison started coming home with rashes from stale diapers. She'd be extremely fussy and hungry by the time we got home. We would talk to Tom and Skylar about this and request they were more observant of her diapers at the very least her thrashing and screaming because diaper ointment hurt broke my heart every time. Especially since I knew it was avoidable. They'd say yes. But after a while would go back. They have recently started lying to get out of our arraignment. Claiming to be out of town for the week. Then Snapchat us them being at home with their birds. Claim they were sick but our mutual friends would still be hanging out. And claiming that they wouldn't be at home all week for work. When Tom works strictly from home. His job doesn't even have a main office. Without them knowing. We registered Allison with a professional daycare service. I drop her off in the morning and her dad picks her up. Word got to Skylar and Tom and now they're blowing up our phones calling us evil. Shifty. And rude for not telling them they wouldn't have Allison anymore. And claiming I betrayed their trust by not talking to them about my concerns. AITA for finding a daycare for Allison? When asked why they would offer to watch Allison for free. They had said it was because Allison was a joy to be around and that they had no problem doing a favor for their friends. They said accepting payment just felt wrong for something they volunteered and wanted to do. When asked about Allison being kept in a separate room all day, we were under the impression that Tom would be interacting with her semi-frequently. He told us that his job is extremely slow-paced and in the four hours he would be working while looking after her, he would have a one-hour lunch and a 15-minute break. Plus the ability to be with her until he heard a notification from his computer. More info in the comments. As for the visits, we haven't seen them in three weeks. So they haven't been around Allison. And I don't see that changing. I just have this sick feeling in my gut and I don't know if it's guilt or instinct. We had been talking about possible overnights once a week due to the late pickup and early drop-off times 6 a.m to 8 p.m due to our work schedules and drives and i'm just glad i had never agreed to it my husband and i are going to be calling allison's pediatrician tomorrow morning i have this sick feeling and with every traumatic diaper change it gets worse i'm praying that everyone's dark thoughts are wrong but i can't shake this feeling 
Our pediatrician is available for an emergency appointment with us today. Thankfully, we're in the waiting room now. If Allison's pediatrician wasn't available, we would have gone straight to an urgent care nearby. Verdict. Not the asshole. But get your baby examined by a doctor. Update. I am not ready to go into too much detail yet. But we have been advised by Allison's pediatrician to launch an investigation against Tom and Skylar for what I thought was a diaper rash. It was apparently burns. Which would explain how it appeared in the course of one day as badly as it had and why it didn't seem to be healing. Allison is not going into her daycare tomorrow. She will not be leaving my side. My boss is offering me the ability to stay home with her during the course of everything, if a further update is requested at a later time. I will, but I can't for right now. I don't have the mental capacity. Thank you, everyone, for assuring me I did the right thing and advising medical counsel. I feel like a horrible mom for not doing so sooner. But we'll put that aside for now to care for my daughter. I wanted to add this comment from you, Erinium, about a book on safety tips. I got a book about safety to read to my kids. All about don't go anywhere with a stranger. Your private parts are private. Safe grown-ups don't ask you to keep secrets from your parents. Etc. And it has a section of tips for parents. One of them covers behavior to watch out for that might indicate that another adult is a predator. And two of the signs are offering to watch your child for free. And trying to get alone time with your child. Alarm bells were ringing in my head from the beginning of the post. For any parents out there. The book is called, Super Duper Safety School. Safety Tips for Kids and Grown-Ups. Well worth the $14 I paid as my 5 yo can now recite all the safety rules by heart. Reminder. Do not comment on the original post or message the oop. I've never wanted a doctor to be wrong more than I do right now. Well that was upsetting. Jesus. I had a sinking feeling the entire time reading this. Seriously WTF. It's creepy that the couple wanted to watch this baby for free to the point where they got upset. When Allison was taken away from them, so to speak. That poor kiddo. Not focusing on the horrifying part for a bit. Dot why did they blow Oop up for nearly a month if they still wanted access to the child? Of course after weeks of excuses they'd figure out other arrangements. Especially since they didn't communicate for how long they planned to refuse. Were they waiting for the wounds to close before getting her back but didn't want to say that to avoid bringing more focus on them? Makes no sense to me. Maybe it's because I'm a nanny. But even before the burns, why were they okay with their baby being left alone for three hours at a time to play with her toys? A one-year-old should certainly be capable of some amount of independent play. But not three out of four hours with the babysitter. That was neglect to begin with. Before we even delve into the burns and physical abuse aspect. Why was that ever seen as an acceptable babysitting option when they could clearly afford daycare? The whole time anyway. Where their child would have been getting proper support and socialization. As soon as I read, diaper rash, I knew. The same happened to me as a baby. I was too small to really remember. And my parents didn't do anything about it. I'm glad these parents or it feels like a permanently unsolved question mark in my personal history. As I don't have real proof. All I have is knowing I was left in a pedophile's care and then the memory of waking in the middle. Of the night. And home. Screaming from the pain between my legs. And the panic way my parents responded and the desperate need to not let anyone touch me ever again. And my parents making an emergency appointment. And then blank again. And I have no way of finding out more or getting closure or anything. Nothing. I'm glad these parents are confronting it. One of the worst possible outcomes. 
I had such a bad feeling about this reading the original post my only hope is that that little girl doesn't remember it. But I also know that trauma and severe pain can essentially rewire your brain. Especially at that age. I'm confused. Why would you wait three weeks to take your baby to the doctor for diaper rash that won't go away? And there supposedly burns. What kind of first degree burn doesn't heal in three weeks? Burns? Nauseated face. As a new dad that works from home, you're either a good parent or good employee but you can't be both with the baby at home. WTF did they do to that baby? I'd kill them. This was a tough one to read but an important reminder to listen to our instincts as parents. I was one of the ones with dark thoughts in the initial post I said that the couple volunteering so eagerly and often but neglecting to change her diaper didn't add up. I suggested saw. What I didn't specify to OOP was that the rash could be a reaction to the chemicals in lube and or friction burns from a penis rubbing the exterior of the infant's genitalia. Penetration would be easier to identify. I'm horrified that I was likely correct but relieved that there's an investigation. I hope Whoop finds peace and justice. When I read the diaper rashes part 1 knew immediately. Same thing happened to me when I was still in diapers. Hopefully there's enough evidence for this case. There wasn't for mine. I don't even like kids and I want those people to fall into lava for what they did to that baby. Those evil people wanted someone to torture. How is it even possible to do that to a child? How? It's against nature. I knew exactly where this was going. It's like why Facebook is free. They want something from you. Take an infant for free? Nah. Dog. Nah. It's a red flag that they so adamantly wanted to watch her for free. Genuine question. How can you not tell the difference between burns that are not healing and diaper rash? The parents are not to blame in this matter but I am curious as how a person cannot tell the difference. And yes I have a child. I'm sorry Burns. My only question is, why did they wait so long to take her to the doctor? Even if they didn't suspect abuse. At this point it had seemingly been weeks since the baby had been at the friend's house and the rash still wasn't clearing up. It was actually getting more and more painful for the baby. Maybe it's just me, but I'd rather err on the side of caution and be told by the doctor that nothing is wrong with the baby than wait and have something be really wrong. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.